you've watched the show before, you know these are colors. I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Unexpected in the shadows. I like to put. Actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know. You ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? And <laughs> hey, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today's painting is a guy on a ladder. I was out at BNR Farms in Hollister, and uh, this was last year during their uh, harvest. And I took this picture of a guy on a ladder. I've been thinking about it for several months, and today I decided to paint it. I think the best thing about um, doing something, we're going to experiment again today. And one of the best things is we're, we're going to experiment with, imagine this, color. Um, the photo as it is, has a gray ladder, the guy has black pants against a lot of green, and um, you know, there's no red in the painting, so we're going to have to change that. I'm going to make the ladder red, his jeans blue, and we'll, you know, we'll just see what we can do from there. So I'm really excited about this. I think the first thing we want to do is start with the jeans. I'm going to go ahead and mix some blue up. So I'm going to start with the shadow side, and I'm taking some blue ultramarine blue. I think I need a lot more than that. There we go. And I think I want to mix it with a little bit of a cool red, make it a little violet. And then a little bit of cad red light. Gray this down. That's going to be the dark side of the jeans. I'm going to put this in right away. Now I've talked about where do you start first on a painting? I, and I've talked about this before, I always start with the things that I know I can do that, that just feel, feel really good to me and I sneak up on the part that scares me. Alright, so there's, there's enough for the dark. I think it's a good start anyway. And, and what I did was I took the reference photo and I made a black and white copy of it. And that way, the only thing that I was focused on was whether it was dark or light. That really helped me, because, you know, I see that many leaves. Oh, that's just overload. So I'm just going to block in some basic shapes, and we're going to get the point across with as little strokes as possible. Okay, so where's the shadow? There's shadow right here. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. This is going to be fun. I like it when the first stroke is happy. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. Now we did apricots on another show and that, that was fun. And I may sneak a little apricot color in here because it's gorgeous. But this is the guy on the ladder. All right, there's more shadow there. That's just a nice, rich, dark blue jean color. Now, if I were to just put straight ultramarine blue there, it, it would be too, too blue too bright, so I doled it down with its complement. Okay, that's good. We've got dark hair, dark hair, that's, that's more of a medium. I'm going for the darkest dark right now. And I'm going for big shapes. So let's see, there's the fold hair.
Yeah. It's that play of light against dark that's really going to make this thing pop. I have to tell you about the last, the last uh, painting I did, on TV anyway, um, was this mission. And I learned a lot about painting that, and I realized that as far as structures go, I, well, bottom line is, I threw that puppy out. Um, and what I realized, it, and I had done something similar to that before, that I just don't like straight lines, I don't like the hard edges, I really like more organic things. So. This guy on the ladder is a nice combination. You've got a little bit of some edges here, but for the most part, it's just all over the place. And uh, I really like the organic shapes as opposed to geometric shapes. And so there are things that I would, I love the image, and I would love to take a picture of, but as far as painting it, it makes me tired. <laughs> and the longer I paint, I'm not painting anything that makes me tired. You know what? It just doesn't come out good. I'll have to say the only, the only exception is when I'm in a workshop and I'm learning something new. I get, give it all a chance to be good. I can just hear now students come to my class and say, ah, I'm not painting that, it makes me tired. And I'll say, nah, wrong. Got to do it in class. All right, now it's not making much sense, but it will. Always does. Well, just about always. And when it doesn't, what do we do? We throw it out. It's okay to throw them out. It's cathartic. All right, we got a little dark there. I'm going to do a little drawing here so I know where I am. Got some folds there. Now, if you're in another area or other parts of the country and you're wondering, why is she painting a guy on a ladder? <laughs> well, you know, when you're in the city, you paint buildings, you paint what you see. And in, in my part of the country, um, I'm in a very agricultural, uh, agriculture, uh, <laughs> agriculture is king where I live. And so that's what I see. I see fields. I see people picking. And, and uh, so I paint what I know. Or at least what I see. Okay. All right. I need a little smaller brush. All right, so we've got some big blobs. It looks like this big abstract thing, and it really is. So what do we have? What else do we have? It's interesting. He has one cuff that's up and one where it's... From get, probably from getting on and off the ladder, his cuff really isn't, isn't, he didn't have it rolled up anymore. And I'm going to leave it like that. I think it adds interest. So this needs to be a different, different light. Time to make a, a nice medium. So I will make a v medium tone now. I just took white and added that to the mix. And um, and I've been in classes before, and they've said, you can't just add white to something and make it lighter, and, and you know, you just can't do that. And, um, well, you could. <laughs> you could. I have a great mix going here, and adding white is, is a good thing. It, it made it lighter. It's a nice, good gray. And um, if it works, do it. I think what they're cautioning against is taking a straight tube color and adding white to it as a crutch. There we go. So I moved a little more over, a little more blue. That's pretty. So now I'll take a look at the painting and say, where, where, where would this work? Well, I'm transposing the black in my mind to blue, so I'm thinking, okay, where's this mid-value? I think if I hold it up here, I think that's going to that's gonna look pretty good there. It might be even better 
over here on the cuff, so I think that's where I'll put it. Moving to a little bit smaller brush. You always want to try to use a brush that you're most comfortable with and try to get the biggest brush that you can that you're comfortable with. Now there's a little bit of piping or uh, detail right in here. Right now I'm just putting in the, the big shapes. I'll go for the detail later. And in some cases I, I'll never go for the detail. Not my thing. Okay, that's a good medium. Where else do we do? Or do we see that anywhere else? No, that's a little bit lighter. That's a different shade there. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that might approximate that. I think this would be close. So I'm going to put some over in this area. You notice these shapes? Look at look at how how many triangles. You know, even though this is an organ this is a man-made thing. Look at look at there's a triangle here and then another triangle there. And if you start looking at things and relate them to shapes that you know, it makes them easier to draw or even paint. Okay, I like that. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to have to add the lightest lights. Uh, because if I don't put them in now, uh, there won't be room for them later. So it's better to overstate the whites, put a lot, put a lot down, and then sneak up around them. So how am I going to do that? I'll take some straight white and cad yellow deep, maybe even a little bit, just a little bit, tiny bit of Indian yellow. I don't want to send this over the top. There's a time for that and I'm not there yet. Oh, that's pretty. Now, here's a case where the lightest light, the sun's hitting it, it's, it's not blue. It's just not blue in that area. So if I were to take, you know, in the lightest light area, take blue and add white to that, that's a case where you wouldn't really want to add white because it would be too dull. You want something bright. Wherever the sun hits, there's got to be some warm color there. All right, so I'm getting a new brush. Why do I use all these brushes? Well, if you've watched before, you realize that, I, or you've heard that I don't use turpentine to clean my brushes. I use canola oil, so I've got to keep them separate and clean, and then I use canola oil at the end. It's less toxic and it conditions your brushes. But you can't go back into the painting once you've used canola oil, so you gotta be sure you're done with the brush. Because it would affect the molecular, ooh, see that was a little too much orange there. Let's see if I can rectify that. I had to get my apricot color in there somewhere. Oh, that's pretty. Might be a little too much, but I'm liking it. I'm going to leave it. I'll find out later. Okay. Somebody was saying in class, how can you get this close and not pick up the other color? Well, if you look closely, and which is great, you can do that with a camera, you'll see that I'm not touching. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know how kids, when they, they don't, there are certain kids I've, I've seen where they, didn't, they don't want food touching on their plate. And uh, so these, these colors are not touching. And so at this stage, I'm able to keep them clean and separate. I leave a little, little free space, a little paint-free zone. And let's see. So we've got light here, up the back of his leg here, his light here. We'll start doing some blending down there. Let's just get this light in. And where else is it really, really light? Well, basically, the cool thing about an outdoor shot 
is that you have one light source, and that's the sun. So you know, it's not like you're inside and you have to worry about turning all the other lights off and just having one light source. This is it. It's coming this way. And uh, so we're hitting the back of his, the right side of his jeans is where the light hits. So it's easy, easy just, just to remember where to put this stuff. I do like, you know, that, that's another thing. There's, I like to break some of the rules. Of course, they tell you not to have more than one light source. Um, but it's fun because, you know, when you're, you're an in, if you're painting an interior scene and you're looking at sometimes the way the light plays off of something would only work with several light sources. So it really adds this really cool, surreal quality. So I, I would encourage you to experiment with lots of different light sources. The worst that can happen, you don't like it, and you throw it out. The best that can happen is it's really cool. I always use, um, I'm an optimist, I always use good material just in case, from the time I started painting, uh, I knew people that would practice on cardboard and things that you could throw out and things that weren't going to stand the test of time. And, uh, and I thought, but what if I had a miracle and painted something really cool and it was on this terrible thing that was going to fall apart. So, um, so I always expected a masterpiece. I was frustrated a lot in the beginning because it didn't always happen. But, um, but when I did do a good one, it was on a good quality piece of canvas. And, uh, you know, they're, they're there. It stands the test of time. Same thing with paint. I always use the best I could afford. All right, light, 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 light. I'm just looking at all these little areas. There's some more light hair. I didn't leave enough room between some of this, so I have to get a little skinnier brush here and see if I can fix that. Let's see where else I can use this, this big old brush. Okay, that's good. I think that's the biggest bulk of the light. There's some here that I'll, I'm going to put this light in and blend it, even though it's not that bright there, and I'll blend it with some uh, a mid-tone later. Right on the, oops, at least that was my intention. <laughs> okay, that's good. Now we need to do one more shade blue. And that's the in-between. So I'll take some of this, move it over. I'm going to grab all this white that's up here. And it's kind of in the light. It's got some light there, so I'm going to add some of the warm tone to it. Let's see. Has to be enough difference to make a difference. That's good. That's good. Oh, I think I will use it. It might not be light enough, but we'll see. I'm going to try it. Okay, what kind of a brush am I looking for? You see me digging around in here. Well, I want something that's... Uh, there, we go, there we go. I didn't want something that was too soft. I wanted something that I could really scrub with. So this has a little stiffer bristle on it. And let's put this down. I had too much medium and not enough paint. I do that sometimes. I'm scrubbing a little harder. I want to get rid of these pencil lines.
Now, this is a first statement. That's usually what we accomplish in the in the show. Uh, and so I want to get the whole canvas covered. So I'm really just concerned with getting the biggest shapes and and getting a good solid foundation. Yeah, I'm just going right over the top of that color I put down here that you heard me say whoops about a little earlier. And I may go over the top of that with uh, a little more dark. Okay. I'm going to blend a little bit of this together. So we've got dark, medium, light. We're going in the direction of the cuff. That's cool. This has some interesting folds. I'm not going to put them in um, at this point. I'm just putting basic bottom line stuff to give us enough information. See, now I should have left some light in there, but I didn't. So you know what? You just keep moving. I think that's what happens after, after I've been painting so long, is I don't stress over things that I could have done, things that I should have done. It's like, well, this is where we are. Where do you want to go next? It takes a lot of stress that way. I have to tell you, when I first started painting, though, I would, you know, I'd try to get this thing, and it would bug me because it was just not right, and I'd try and fix it, and try and fix it, and try and fix it, and I'd spend way too much time on it, and I would, and it would take all the fun out of painting because I would just, you know, try to get it right. So um, what I've learned is I do the best that I can, and I, and I really go for it. And the cool thing about oil painting is if it's just not where I want it to be at that certain point in time, I um, scrape a little bit of it off so it's got smooth edges, and I let it dry. And then you can go back into it, and you've had time to reflect. And, and um, usually the next time you go back into it, it's easier to make improvements. And you don't overwork it. OK. So these are some funny looking shapes here, but we're working on it. All right, I'm going to take some of this uh, blue. And right now, this is just pretty, uh, pretty bizarre looking. That's OK. Well, this, is, <laughs> this is in the bizarre stage. I'm going to take some of this blue and blend it right into this darker area here, just a little bit. And I'm going to soften this edge a little bit. And what, I didn't put any paint on the brush. I just did some strokes back and forth here. I'm going to soften this slightly. And I'll soften this edge. And as much as I'd like to play with these jeans for the rest of the uh, show, I'm going to move on to other areas and then see what I can come back to, because otherwise I'd just be stuck. All right, so let's see. I'll put the lightest light here. I need to move on just on this little area here lightest light of the jean so that this goes all the way over here, even covers up the pencil so that that's there. Okay, so that's in. All right, well, we've gone way too far into the program without putting any red down. <laughs> and you know, I love red. And when I looked at the, the photo, um, the original reference photo had beautiful apricots in it, so that added the bright color that I liked. Um, but I really like this composition, so what I'm going to do is make this ladder red. And uh, I'm just going to take some of this quinacridone violet. Oh, that's gorgeous. And I think I'll just mix that with uh, some doxazine. Yeah, that's nice. It might not even be, well, let's just 
quit playing with it here. Ooh, maybe since I'm going to use, okay, I changed my mind. <laughs> since, since I'm going to use, nor, my, you know, my favorite way to, to um, gray down a red would be to add this carbazol violet. It really adds a nice thing in it and it's not harsh. But since I'm going to use a lot of sap green in the background, I want this to be harmonious. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use that to, to gray it down a little bit. There. And it is the complement. Oh, that's pretty. OK. So I'm getting yet another brush. This time I'm getting a squared off brush because I've got some man-made edges I'm going to do here. All right shadow side of the, and this is darker than, than really the latter is, but I don't care. That's, that's why we paint. In fact, my, the director I talked to her today about changing all these colors on the reference photo, and she said, you're your own personal Photoshop. And I thought, how cool is that? That's really, we all get to, to decide whatever, what color everything wants to be. All right, so here's the dark side of the latter. I'm going to go ahead and I'm happy with that red, so that's good. Nothing worse than putting the stroke down and uh, not being happy with it. I lifted the canvas so I could get the bottom. Now I do get a nice straight or a fairly straight edge with this squared off brush. It helps. Yeah, that's a pretty red. <laughs> Can you see me going out to the farm and saying, wouldn't that be so much prettier during harvest if all your ladders were red? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'd think I was funny. We'll see. I'll have to talk to her. All right. And this is going to be the shadow side of the ladder. I'm going to put it all the way to the edge, even though it doesn't quite go there. I can always put some greenery in later. Let's see. It was kind of at an angle. I want to get these main, yeah, that's where the leaf was, main points in first. And then I'll see what we can do about tweaking, depending on how much time we have. All right, so in this part of the ladder, there's a shadow here. Oh, let's see where a shadow is on there. That's great. I'm going to use the same color. Now, normally I would add some variation and everything, but I'm getting the basic stuff in. I'm just putting this down. All right, let's see. There's, that's an interesting shadow here. More triangles. Okay, and this whole thing was in shadow, and actually where his uh, knee here, or where his leg is, that needs to be redder. Okay, now I'll put in the red red. I'm going to take some straight cad red light, just because I like it. And it's, 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 there's a little more logic. There, it's a warmer color and um, warmer, lighter, brighter. I'm going straight into that puppy. And um, woo, might be a little too much, but that's all right. I'm going to put this down first and we'll, we'll see what happens later. Wow. Well, right now, isolated, it looks like it's over the top, and I've, <laughs> I've been known to do that. Um, so we'll see how that, I'm not going to judge it. I'm just putting, well, yeah, of course I'm judging it. You can hear that. But I'm going to leave it alone and decide what to do with it later. It may be okay once I put in the green surrounding it. Let's see. You know, trying to get a straight line here, I just... I just hold the brush and let gravity do its thing. I 
Later when it dries, I will take a T-square and um, on some of these sharper angles to get a to get a good clean line. But just blocking it in, nah. Let's put the paint down. Okay, there's that. Where else is it light? It's light here. So this is like puzzle pieces. Because at this point in the show, it's still very abstract. And it's probably going to be another 10 minutes before it even makes sense. Let's see, this goes under here. I'm still trying to kind of drawing as I'm painting. And I'm 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 already thinking I would love to make this more of a more of a candy apple red than this orange cad red light. So I may just impose some of that over the top. All right, this needs to come down here. They actually need to touch. The good thing about Cad Red Light as a base is that it's um, opaque. And that Perlene Scarlet that I love, it's a great color to put over, it's transparent. So it's not, not always as good as the first, first time around when you're putting color down. Well, that's good. Okay, so step back and um, if you use your imagination, <laughs> it's starting to look like something. And if you don't, we'll just pretend. All right, um, do I want to put some of that red over the top of that? Sure, I do. Not until I get the green down, though. I'm actually restraining myself here so that I get some of the other canvas colors. Otherwise, I'd spend the whole thing on the ladder. And, um, yeah. But I like where it's going. All right, now, with the leaves, today, today's show, we are not going to spend hours putting in every leaf. I'm going to put in a dark for the dark masses for the leaves. It's going to be very abstract. And um, so I'm just going to get that covered. So this is almost the opposite. I'm taking the sap green, and I'm going to grab this dark red color, and the, the green will be dominant, but the red will gray it down, and then it'll be harmonious. These guys have to be friends with each other. It's so important. That's probably not enough green for such a huge area, but we'll, I'm going to put it down. We'll see. So what am I grabbing? A brush that's, hmm, there we go. And I'm going to need some more medium. <clears throat> I don't normally keep it in a cup. I normally keep it on, right there on the palette, but with with the show, it's an angle, and that wouldn't be good. It would just fall off. Okay, so I'm, I'm not kidding when I'm talking about just mashing in some color. That's a big block. And this is a great, great, uh, when you get the black and white photo, it's just really good because then you can, you can see that, that there are whole just areas of, of dark that you wouldn't, Normally, you try to do too many details in the beginning, or at least I would. So I save the details for later, which would not be during this show. And if this is the first time you've tuned in, we tape this show live to tape. So whatever you see, 
is what you get. There's no editing. We really want to give you a good idea of, of what the painting process is like. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear me saying oops all the time. Okay, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to make that whole thing fairly dark in here. Oops, got to make sure I leave room for a shoe. Well, that's a little bit lighter, lighter. Above that is dark. I'm going to have light, light coming up over that. This is pretty, a pretty dark silhouette. Yeah. Now when I'm through with the painting, yeah, it will suggest leaves, but I'm not going to put I'm not going to paint every leaf. That makes me tired. Okay, this is dark shape. Connecting some of that. Am I following the reference photo? Nah. At this point, I'm just making some shapes that I think I like. Covering the canvas. Throwing in some stuff back here. Let's see. There's a shoe, shoe. Since I know that the light's hitting here, I'm going to, even though it's a light leaf in the reference photo, this is where you do your own like Jan says, your own personal Photoshop. Things work best when you have light against dark, so I think a darker shape here would work better. That's good. And then um, what do I want to put here? I don't want to make it obvious that I'm putting a straight line here, but, but I'm doing that. That's exactly what I'm doing. Separate that ladder. Now, to put the trunk in or not to put the trunk in? I don't know. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is go to the top and put in the lights here. And then by the time I get down there, I'll have decided what I want to do. I usually have a, <clears throat> a good general plan of where I want to go. But I don't always do the same thing twice. I don't cook the same way twice either. It's a good thing and it's not a good thing. <laughs> so whatever your personality is, it's going to come out in your painting. So go, go with it. All right, here's a nice light tone. Yep, okay. I'll put that down. Now the leaves in the background I can just make make them uh, blend away. The stuff in the foreground, I will have to eventually address those a little and make them a little more, but not a lot. I stop mid-sentence. A little more realistic. Sometimes I get sucked in the painting. Okay. There's some hot lights up here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this pretty quickly before they, it becomes tacky. So unless you're painting in the hot sun, you, would, you wouldn't necessarily have this problem. Oh, 
that's cool. Just this really nice little abstract background here. Let's see, we've got some leaves coming over there, so I'll have to I'll have to put some darker green in. But I need to get this stuff covered. Uh, just what happens when you paint in a studio like this. Switch into the dark. Let's see, this side of his leg is darker, darker leaves. So I'm just massing in these big shapes and make some, uh, we'll make some sense out of it later. Or maybe not, depends on how far we have, how much time we have. But the overall painting will make sense. And what's the point of all this? I, I want to encourage you to, to experiment with scenes that you have, like you see a photograph, you'd kind of like to paint it, but it's just not quite what you want, well then change it, it's okay. I know there's some people that are afraid to try, well what if I don't like the color, or what if, uh, what if, what if, what if, what if. Um, if you really are nervous about it, you could always wait till it dries, put a little thing of uh, saran wrap or something over it, and put this, if you want to try a completely different background, put some paint down so you can see what it looks like next to it, see if you like it, and if you like it, go for it. Have I ever done that? Nah. Like Bruce says, I'm a risk taker. <laughs> I'm going to just give it a shot. I'm not that patient, but I do know people who have tried it. I like this. It gives some motion to this leafy stuff that's going on. Now the leaves at this point really aren't, well, you know, and you can see they're not defined and I don't expect them to really be defined by the end of the, the show. But you will get a sense of the legs and uh, so you'll know where it's going. I really want to get the canvas covered before I start doing any details. Again, I picked something really ambitious to, to show you how to do in a short time frame. Alright, now that I've blocked in the color up there, I'm going to take a blending brush. Let's see if that, I'm feeling to see which, which is going to be good. This one's good. There are others that were too soft that wouldn't have been good for blending. And I'm just going to blend and wipe. So this is a good base for the, the defined leaves that we will put on top. And you say, well, what if I want to learn how to do the defined leaves on top? Well, I'll do another show sometime in the not too distant future that will show you how to do a leaf up close and personal. And we'll focus just on that. This show's focus is on being brave, trying different colors, and picking a composition that, uh, you know, I looked at, you know, I looked at this, I didn't, uh, I didn't say, okay, who's going to buy this? I just had to paint it. 
So, you know, I'm not worried about that. I was more worried about, I just really, I, I wasn't worried. I just wanted to paint it. Just something I needed to do. Yeah, it's getting really tacky up here. So the sooner I can blend this, the better. Great background. Happy with that. Okay, so what's going on in here? Not enough variation, so I need to throw some light up in here. Just, uh, let's see, there's some stuff over the top. You know what? I think I like the composition better if this red went, uh, so I'm changing, a lot. I'm changing as I'm going. And I start getting all these brushes together. Um, I'm going to take this, and I don't like how that leaf is covering that up. I want this to go up further. Yeah. I'm going to take that up further. Off the page. It's bending a little, so I didn't get it real straight. And I'll have to fix that later, but... Okay, so that means the dark has to go up a little more. Where did I come up with that? Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that being taller. Okay, that's cool. Um, glad that worked out. <laughs> I guess I am a risk taker. Okay. But this is what would happen if I was in the studio at home. I mean, I have a set plan, but you know what? It doesn't always work that way. It's kind of like when you're, you know, you're stuck in traffic, and you can either sit there and, and, and accept it. Sometimes you have no choice. Sometimes you just have to sit there. But, you know, you might try a different way home, and um, that's what I was doing here. Crank up the radio and try the long way home. I'm adding a little more interest here. Let's see, what happened? I just need to clean this, these edges up a little bit. Okay, I gotta quit playing there. And do I wanna put the trunk in? No, I don't. Um, I think the only thing I want to show is basically the ladder, the guy's legs, and feet, and um, and at the end, just the leaves that are sticking out here will be defined. Everything else is going to go in the background. So that makes it easy. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in... This is just going to be dark. It also will make the ladder pop a little more, too. I'm doing random shapes, truly random shapes just because. All right, I'm going to lift this up so that I can get to the bottom of the canvas. Oops. There was another oops. All right. What was I conscious of of the random shapes? That they were not equal. That there was a good rhythm. Uh, I'll go ahead and add... Some more light down here. And yeah, you know what? I, I got some of it on the ladder. It's like, it's all right. You know, you'll go back and forth, and some of that red actually adds some interest here. All right, let me get the rest of that. And then I've got to do his shoes before the day's over here because the guy is floating. He was really shy. He saw me come up with that camera, and um, <laughs> he was up the ladder. Fast. 
It was just really nice of the of being our farmers to let me come out and uh, do a photo shoot, especially in the middle of their harvest, because that, that is crazy. They are just so busy during that time. So I just tried to take pictures and stay out of everybody's way. Oh, that's pretty. I'm liking that. Okay, so now the next thing I need to do is, is give the guy some shoes. He needs some sole on his shoes. Okay, so he's got some red in his shoes. I'm not going to put, believe it or not, I'm not going to put red in his shoes because I want a little contrast between that and the... Um, so I think the first thing I'll do is just do a light and a dark, and then I'll see what kind of color I put in. I might, I might throw in some purple. Oof, a very little room left here. All right, let's let's get some more white out. Hopefully, I brought some more. Yep. All right, so we have the light side and the shadow. So just this one tanny has some light. I'll put that in. Again, it's white with some something warm in it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the cad yellow. Nah, Indian yellow. Running out of room on my palette. All right. I'm trying to find a little bit smaller brush. I actually threw away a bunch of old scruffy brushes, so I'm, I need to go buy some more, believe it or not. Wow, I got enough paint on my brush. All right, so this is just light. I'm putting in the major light areas, and we'll put the mid-tones over the top. I also don't want it to be the same. It is going to be more violet because I don't want it to be the same uh, same color as the blue jeans. Yeah, that's good. All right, so let's let's make it more of a a violet shadow color. I'm just going to add some purple to that. And that's just a little too sweet. So I'll gray that down with some green. Why did I pick the green? OK, I have to tell you, that was totally intuitive. There was <laughs> no logic involved in that one. Um, but if I analyze it, I know that it's um, it's warmer, so it would it would be uh, first of all I knew that it would be harmonious because I've used that already. So so merging that together would be good. It would um, it would gray it down and it would still keep it warm. But was I thinking that when I grabbed it? No, I just grabbed it. Now am I happy with that? No. What do I want to, ooh, okay. There we go. Thalo turquoise, doxazine purple. That's totally over the top. Um, I need to add a little more green here because I, I went a little overboard. There we go. Let's go overboard. <laughs> Okay, because I'm I was worried about getting the same color as that, so um, as the as the hem, and um, every which every way that I try to mix it, I am doing that. So I'm going to add I'm going to add a little uh, orange to that. There we go. I made that a lot warmer. So now it'll work. I got brushes everywhere. All right, so I'm going to take my dirty brush that's got some orange in it already. And you know what that. 
it's like, how can you mix the same color over and over again? I just did. All right, so instead, I'm going to grab some red. That's amazing. There, that's better. Now this is warmer. His shoes are warmer. I'm going to block in just the big shapes and throw in a little detail in a minute. Because at this point, that's all we need to say. I'm not a babbler. I could, I could sit in the car. I mean, I may talk a lot on the show. <laughs> But, you know, I'd go on a long trip and go a couple hours without saying anything. And I think that's the same with my painting. You don't always have to be talking to make a point. Okay, in order for this really to read, I need to throw in a little bit of dark right in that corner. There. All right, so we've got dark, light, Needs to be some dark under hair, so it's not floating. Throw in a little color for the uh, shoes. It's amazing what you can get done in just a short amount of time. Okay, so here we are. Have it just about blocked in. Maybe we'll throw in a little of this other red just for the little stripes of his shoes. I know they're there even though I can't see them. Ooh, didn't want that red or that green. Okay, so that's, that's a rough little sketch. And, um, you know, even though here we, here we slapped up some major shapes and really didn't put any detail, but you get a sense that there's light hitting this guy on the ladder and he's in the trees. So. I hope that you learned from this, this show to just put in the big shapes, be brave with the color, and just paint. And if you have any questions, email me at shannon at shannongerson.com. I'd love to talk to you. Thanks so much for watching Give Your Walls Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom.